in primitive chordates and jawless fish, the muscles along the abdominal wall were split into a series of segmented myotomes separated by connective tissue. And by the jawed vertebrates, such as this shark, these myotomes were then divided into a dorsal or epaxial division and a ventral or hypaxial division. In early tetrapods, the epaxial musculature was retained as a single muscle, the dorsalis trunchi, that salamanders could still use for lateral flexion of the back. In frogs, this is less important in locomotion. By the evolution of the first amniotes, as evident here in this alligator, this sheet of epaxial muscle, which could collectively be called the erector spinae, can be subdivided into a lateral division, the iliocostalis muscle, a medial division, the longissimus muscle, and a medial division, the spinalis, or also the transversospinalis division. So the ancestral dorsalis trunchi, a single muscle, is divided into three separate muscles in amniotes, which uh, can collectively be called the erector spinae. Although mammals like this opossum would further reduce the importance of lateral flexion of the back in locomotion, they still retain the epaxial musculature which forms the erector spinae muscle. You can also observe this in this cat, both the erector spinae and its subdivisions, the iliocostalis longissimus and the spinalis divisions. This is also evident in this goat, this sheep, this cow, and this monkey. The epaxial musculature also contributes to a few small muscles such as the interspinalis and a few muscles of the neck as evident in the cervicus capitis of the turtle and then also the splenius found in the pig the cat, and the sheep. The dorsal epaxial musculature is innervated by the dorsal rami of spinal nerves.